with the pre-launch. So talk to me about um, your how you see category creation. And if you're in sales and you're listening, you're like, why is he talking about category creation? Trust me, this will be an interesting one because it helps you. It'll help you understand sort of positioning and how to, if your company doesn't have really strong product market fit or really strong positioning, it'll help you figure out how to get there. So that being said, Sri, talk to me about your categorization playbook and what you did. Sure. So uh, Rocket Lane is my second startup journey and uh, both times we picked initial market to be uh, evangelistic market, meaning people aren't looking for a product like this. They don't know it exists and we're sort of along with creating a product, also uh, trying to help define the category itself. And, you know, this time, this is more of a beachhead market for us. We always knew that there is a wider market that exists that we want to expand into, but it helps to start with a market that's a little more of a niche where you can truly establish yourself as the leader. And we picked client onboarding or customer onboarding as that market for us, where there were very few tools out there there's a brand new category being uh, defined on G2 when we were launching. But long before that even happened, we started working on what, you know, when we last discussed, I chatted about as the category creation playbook. Now, um, where did the inspiration come for that? I, I would actually uh, want to thank Anthony Canada, one of the, you know, early team members and uh, uh, early CMO of uh, Gainsight. He actually wrote a book called Category Creation. I'd highly recommend entrepreneurs who are sort of creating something completely new to go and, you know, uh, read that book. Uh, and when I started, that was one of the first things I did. I knew this was new. Someone recommended the book to me, uh, read the book, and I, I thought, hey, most of the ideas in here, it's actually worth pursuing each of these ideas and making it happen. Um, i give you an example of a few things that we did. Month one, every weekend, I would actually spend on putting together, think of it as the outline of a book. If we were to write a book on category creation, what would the chapters be? And what would be the key takeaways in each chapter? So I was actually, you know, looking for thought leadership content for us to help define that category. And every conversation I was having with, uh, you know, prospect, uh, future po prospect, or uh, anyone in the space, any expert in the space, was something I was diligently making note from on topics that we could add to the book, um, you know, what, what would make for a good blog to read, good thought leadership article to write, etc. And I would say in, in by month two, I had that outline well-defined, good write-up for each of the chapters, and actually, I would say also 10 pieces of thought leadership, which were sort of 80% there. I didn't bother to polish it, give it the right introduction, etc. But the core of the topic was already there. And one more thing we discovered while chatting with people in this space was there was so much nuance to how people were thinking about the customer onboarding journey and different phases, different stages of the journey that, mm. you know, we we found it it would be useful to introduce these people that we were talking to, to each other, right? We felt they would benefit from learning from each other. Someone's doing a great job of how they run their kickoff meeting. Someone else is thinking through what should happen in a steering committee meeting for them to have faster success with customers they were onboarding. Someone else was figuring out how to de-risk the projects that they were running, how to have early warning signals. And we sort of said, hey, why not put all of these people in a space together, create a community, right? So we sort of, nine months before we launched a product, we actually launched a community, which I think, you know, you need conviction in the space for you to start doing these things early. But once you have that conviction that here's the audience I'm building for, let me start building the audience as well in parallel. Uh, that's something we did. So the community was growing. It was 700 people by the time we launched. Uh, and before that, we also had a podcast that we had. So we recorded uh, you know, 13 episodes of content for the podcast before we launched. We had webinars, two webinars happening every month as part of the community. We called it implementation stories because these were leaders and you know practitioners of implementation slash onboarding as a function that we were chatting with. 
and uh, genuinely started taking notes from each of these meetings and webinars, posting those notes on LinkedIn, uh, not on the blog yet, just as like a Notion document. So people understood that we were doing this out of the passion for learning and sharing in the space, not to build traffic to our website, right? And uh, eventually, of course, all of this content also made it to our blog and website. But uh, yeah, when we launched, the idea was, how can we look much bigger than where we actually are, right? Someone, if, if they hit our website uh, the day of our launch, they would have thought, hey, this company must have been around for two years. They have a podcast, they have a community with like 800 people in it and uh, so much else, so much content uh, already posted, etc. I would say one more thing we paid attention to is the maturity of the website itself, right? So we wanted it to come across not as a completely new product, but as something that's been around for a bit. So we, we took care. What was the vibe of the website? Was it, hey, we are a brand new startup or was it, hey, we are a mature player? And uh, uh, last but not the least, I think the product itself, we took a year to bake the product because we took a very different approach to even building product. Uh, it wasn't an MVP that we launched. We launched something that felt fairly full featured at launch it's also because in a new category we were think of it as uh, taking this approach of saying hey this is an all in one product for this uh, function of customer onboarding so we needed to bring together many pieces where people would have been using siloed tools for each of these and we can't launch something that doesn't do do justice to that vision um, so yeah these are some of the things that we really got going in early days.